Boris Johnson a serious politician for serious times? Well, I think I've just made my view clear on that, haven't I? Well, I do, well actually, I think what you're doing, Tom, actually, is you're, you're, you're very articulate and uh, eloquent in uh, slightly skirting around uh, the question. Uh, morning, Tom. Morning, Matt. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. It's pretty, I mean, even by the standard of the Select Committee report, this is pretty damning, uh, this. Uh, it's sort of nobody emerges from it unscathed. Um, the then Foreign Secretary was uh, Dominic Raab. Uh, he, he, I mean, he's obviously moved on uh, to be uh, Justice Secretary now, but he spent the entire time on holiday. Well, uh, you're right that nobody in leadership positions emerges unscathed. Yeah. We're actually very complimentary of uh, the military and indeed the commandments of the MOD who prepared and planned for the operation. We're also very complimentary of the diplomats who stayed behind and did what they could and the Home Office officials, Border Force people who were sent in by Priti Patel to do what they could. We're very complimentary of all of those. The, the, the elements that we're not, uh, that, that we're deeply concerned about are those leadership elements who failed to plan and in doing so plan to fail. Um, you've called uh, today for um, the most senior civil servant at the uh, um, uh, Foreign Office, Sir Philip Barton, to consider his position. Why in particular do you think he should do that? Well, first of all, uh, there was the disaster of the withdrawal. You know, there was at least 18 months and more, in fact, if you look at uh, the reports that we were getting in and indeed just simply listening to the news in the period before the August debacle. You know, we knew, for example, that Vice President Biden had called for a withdrawal from Afghanistan. We knew that Trump had been in negotiation with the Taliban about withdrawing from Afghanistan. And after Vice President Biden was elected and became President Biden, it was not exactly a secret that he was planning to withdraw. And yet there were no serious plans by the Foreign Office uh, to withdraw those people who were entitled to our support. There were no serious plans for the evacuation uh, of uh, those people who had depended on us and who had stood by us in our moment of need, and now it was our turn to stand by them. And so it wasn't exactly a surprise when all this went wrong. Uh, what was uh, a surprise to many of us is the fact that the FCO leadership failed so badly. Now, it wasn't only that, I'm afraid. We asked uh, the PUS, the Permanent Undersecretary, the head diplomat uh, of the Foreign Office of the British government, about what happened and the decisions he took. And I'm afraid we didn't get very clear answers. And we got answers that led us to believe that in some ways we were not getting uh, the integrity and honesty that we should expect. So we've asked uh, him to consider his position. Uh, and we've done so with a very heavy heart. This is an organisation that I worked for in the past, that many of us who are on the Foreign Affairs Committee, Conservative, Labour, SNP, you know, think very highly of and really do expect to be a Rolls-Royce department for, for a very important country. Uh, and so it's it's enormously disappointing that we felt obliged to write this. Uh, you In the report, you, caught, you uh, suggested Sir Philip Barton uh, had a determination to avoid unearthing the facts. Is that a polite way of accusing him of a cover-up? Well, his words were incompatible with the words of whistleblowers and of emails that were released to us. Uh, I'll leave you to read uh, further into that. Um, let's talk about pen farthing, because uh, there was a lot of focus uh, at the time when uh, British nationals and Afghans who'd worked for uh, the British government were trying to get out of Afghanistan. And there seemed to be an awful lot of, certainly, headlines, and it seems behind the scenes, sort of diplomatic effort given uh, towards evacuating 173 stray cats and dogs uh, on behalf of the Nozad animal charity. In your report, you say that Penn Farthing, the founder of the, the Noah charity, left Kabul as the only passenger on a 230-seat private jet because he was bringing his cats and dogs back. I mean, presumably you feel like there could have been people on that plane with him. Well, we certainly do feel that, the, that by the stage it had got to, you know, it was, it was deeply disappointing that this was the outcome. Now, let's be quite clear, we don't uh, ascribe any blame to Nalzad Charity or to those people involved with it. You know, they were very clear what they were campaigning for. They were extremely clear what issues mattered to them. And, you know, we may agree or disagree, but they have every, every right to champion those issues. The area we are critical of is of the British government, because it's the job of the British government, not of charity heads, to prioritise the needs of the British people. And here, the needs of the British people were in uh, protecting those who were entitled to our support and who should have got it. So that's where we're really targeting uh, the blame. It's certainly not about, uh, it's absolutely not about uh, the individuals in the charity. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that's the thing. He could ask for help. Whether or not he got it was a separate question. You've, you've come to the conclusion that Boris Johnson probably did intervene on behalf of the cats and dogs. 
Well, we, we, we don't quite come to that conclusion. What we say, and I, I think it's important that we're clear on this, is we say that we heard many reports, including from leaked emails and whistleblowers, that there was a strong belief that the Prime Minister or Number 10, it's very hard to get clarity on which it was, uh, had some uh, injection into the decision making. Now, what we also say is that we haven't found an alternative explanation that holds water. And what we've also said is we couldn't get a clear answer out of uh, the senior officials in the Foreign Office. Now, you can go from there to wherever you like, but I'm afraid we're sticking to the facts and those are the facts as we found them. OK, um, as we've got you, Tom Tuganart, you're a Conservative MP. Uh, what about the fact of this photograph of Boris Johnson, glass in hand, surrounded by wine bottles? Um, is, is, does it look like a party to you? Well, Matt, I, I've spent the morning talking about Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe and talking about the withdrawal from Afghanistan. These are two enormously serious moments in, in our recent history. One is uh, the life of a British citizen who was detained illegally for six years. And the second is about what we've, I think, accurately described as one of the biggest reversals in British foreign policy in a generation. These are really serious matters. These are moments where seriousness in government doesn't just have an effect on individuals' lives abroad. It has an effect on us at home because lack of seriousness leads to people not to either fear us if they're our enemies or trust us if they're our friends. And it leads to people making decisions like Vladimir Putin's uh, uh, attack on Ukraine. Now, I'm not saying that this was the only thing that triggered his attack. Of course it wasn't. Uh, but it's one of the things that fed into it. And so seriousness in government is important. It's what keeps uh, food prices down. It's what keeps energy prices down. It's what protects the British people. And I'm afraid these photographs just don't look serious, do they? Uh, is it time for a change to someone more serious in charge of your party and the country? Well, I think it's time for all of us to look at what this country needs. And, you know, I think we should be pretty ruthless in, in our, in our uh, views. You know, I don't have the right to sit as the Conservative candidate in Tunbridge and Morning. Every election, the local association gets to choose who they think is the best person to carry the standard forward. And uh, then the people of Tunbridge and Morning get to choose whether they want a Conservative or Labour or whoever. Uh, to sit in the seat and represent them in Parliament. And I think it's absolutely essential that whenever we come up to an electoral event, we look ahead, we look forward, uh, at what is the best answer for the United Kingdom. Look, we have some really serious challenges coming ahead. I mean, I don't know about you, Matt, but I can tell you, I can feel in my pocket £1.70, £1.75 pence a litre for petrol. You know, I have to drive quite a lot in this job. And, you know, I can feel as well the cost of heating going up. I can see the, the, you know, the price of bread is now, I mean, I'm paying about £2, £2.50 a loaf, depending on where I get it. You know, you, you know that seriousness matters, I'm afraid. This isn't, you know, this is about fixing problems for the British people. It's not just about us. It's not about the Conservative Party and it's certainly not about me. Is Boris Johnson a serious politician for serious times? Well, I think I've just made my view clear on that, haven't I? Well, I don't, well actually, I think what you're doing, Tom, actually, is you're, you're, you're very articulate and uh, eloquent in uh, slightly skirting around uh, the question do you think that Boris Johnson should remain as Prime Minister? Matt, look, it's not a decision just for me. And that's no, the but reason I'm asked, but, I... But you can have an opinion. You've got an opinion on lots of things. You've got an opinion on Philip Barton. You've got an opinion on uh, the price of petrol. Uh, have you got an opinion on whether or not Boris Johnson should remain as Prime Minister? Matt, this is something I'm talking to colleagues about today. And the reason I'm not giving you uh, a, a yes-no answer is because this isn't a binary question. It's about it the is. leadership of the It is a binary no, question. No, it's not. It's about a team. Sorry, the idea that the idea a party is led by a single individual, I'm afraid, is not true. I know of course it is. He's a Tory party like leader. To He's at top. Come uh, well, on. He's yeah, a but, Tory but, party leader. I'm asking if you are happy with Boris Johnson being your leader during these serious times. Look, uh, uh, my, my view is pretty clear, which is that well, I, I think we need a serious team and we need a serious leader. I think, frankly, in the last few, uh, you know, the last few weeks, last few months we've failed to have that and we need to make sure that we've got somebody who can do it in, in the years to come. I think now, so if, if listeners listen to this uh, are going to go away with the view that actually you don't think Boris Johnson is a serious leader for serious times uh, but you're just slightly reluctant to say so. Well I don't think I'm being particularly reluctant I think I've been pretty clear on it and, and I don't think that you have to read very far between any lines to find to, to see that. So why not, just say, why not just say I don't want Boris Johnson to be the leader of my party? Because this isn't down to an individual, Matt. And I've, I've, I've said, I'll say it again. You know, this is down to a team. And the reality is the Conservative Party, like all political parties, they're teams, right? They're associations of individuals from across the country. And it's not just down to me. And so what I spend my time doing, whether it's on committee working with people across Parliament or whether it's, uh, you know, on party matters like this one, I spend my time talking to colleagues. Because this isn't just about me representing myself. It's not about me. It's not about 
you know, it's not just about the wonderful people of Tunbridge and Walling, who I think are obviously the most important people in the country. Oh, but it is about it is about making sure that this country has the ability to go go forward in, in ways that, you know, change the change the direction. And, and that's why focusing on who the team is, whether we've got the team right. And, and yes, of course, the lead is part of that team, but there's more than just an individual. Uh, um, if you could indulge me for a moment, I'm going to ask a question about you. Uh, Kevin has just tweeted in, the sooner Tom replaces Boris as PM, the better. Do you agree with Kevin? Well, I agree with Kevin that we need to focus on who's going to lead us into the future, because the reality is we do need to focus on those issues that matter to, quite rightly, to Kevin and to, to, to everybody else. Look, you know, I mean, this isn't about a single party. This isn't even about, you know, a single person. This is about those policies that matter to the British people, those things that keep us safe abroad and that mean that we can afford to heat our homes and feed our families. And that, I'm afraid, is a, a real problem that we're facing right now. Tom Tuganart is the serious man for serious times. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. You'll have to say that again. Tom Tugendhat is a serious man for serious times. Well, I mean, there are many other serious people in, in politics today. I mean, I don't know if you heard David Simmons this morning on, on Radio 4. I, I did, but well, never mind that. It was on Times Radio. He said that Boris Johnson oh. needs a phenomenally good explanation for what's been going on in Downing Street. Well, there you go. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's a very sensible guy. <laughs> Tom Tugendhat, really appreciate your time this morning and your patience. And it was good to speak to you as well about the, uh, as you re correctly point out, the, the important matters of uh, what went on in Afghanistan uh, last summer. That's Tom Tugendhat, Conservative MP, uh, Chair of the Foreign, Foreign Affairs uh, Select Committee.